Good morning, and welcome to our worship at Clear Lake United Methodist Church on Sunday, March 29th, 2020. We continue to gather together via technology during these difficult times, but know this, God is with us. When our lives feel like a valley of dried bones, the Spirit clothes our hearts with flesh and breathes new life into our souls. Well, again, good morning, everybody. And at this time, I ask that if you are gathered as a family practicing physical distance, that you would pass a peace to one another with a wave, a bow, even the peace sign as we continue to remain as a community of faith. Would you please join with me in our call to worship? When our lives become a valley of dry bones, God clothes us with flesh and hearts that beat with love. When our souls seem withered away, God breathes new life into us once more that we might live. Come, let us worship. Would you please be in an attitude of prayer with me? God of promise and hope, we come to you feeling dried up, like a valley filled with dry bones. Share your visions of new life with us that we might have hope for our future. Bring us up from the grave that we might live as people of promise. Put your spirit within us that we might have life everlasting. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the psalmist, the 130th chapter. The subtitle of my Bible is Waiting for D Divine Redemption. Hear these words. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. And our second reading from the Old Testament this morning comes to us from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house 
of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, has spoken and will act, says the Lord. And a reading from the New Testament this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the people of Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me. The eighth chapter, verses six through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of the sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Would you please join with me in a time of silent prayer? Gracious and holy God, as we come before you this day, we give you thanks for your presence with us. As we come before you this day, we come feeling like dried bones, feeling like we have no life before us with everything that's going on in the world around us. Lord God, my prayer this morning is a simple one. May your spirit breathe life into our hearts and to help us to remember your promise and the hope that comes with knowing you, the hope that comes with crying out to you with our, with our cries for help, with our cries for anger, with our cries of ununderstanding our cries of anxiety, our cries of loss. So Lord, give us strength to persevere in these days. And know that you are with us. May we feel your presence as your loving arms embrace us and grant us peace. 
And Lord, as we continue to pray, we lift up those who are on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the specialists, the first responders, for they truly are in harm's way. May you cover them with your safety, with your grace, with your love. Lord, I pray for our leaders as they have tough decisions to make. May they turn to you for guidance, for strength, for wisdom. Not just the leaders in this country, but the leaders in all countries. For this pandemic isn't just affecting us. It is a global pandemic. And we need you. So give us the strength to never give up hope. Know that you have the last word. And that word is life. Life everlasting. Lord God, all of these things I pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus, the one and only resurrected Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not into temptation. Excuse me. I just had a blank, my friends. You know the prayer, so pray it to yourselves and those gathering with us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. Help us to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Forgive our trespasses. Know that through you there is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 45. The death of Lazarus. Jesus, the resurrection and life. Jesus weeps. And Jesus raises Lazarus to life. Listen to the word of God, as it may truly, truly speak to you. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And after he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you are going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. 
that Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to Jesus and was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Gracious Holy God, I pray that in this time and in this place, that the words of my mouth and that the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as we gather here on the Sunday, March 29th of 2020, we continue in our season of Lent. And as we gather here today, I find it truly has been a Holy Spirit moment for me in preparing for today's service. For I have found today's passages very fitting for what we are dealing with in our lives for the last week's. And also, who knows for how long. 
From the valley filled with dry bones in Ezekiel to the death of Lazarus in John. Today's theme, today's theme focuses on experiences of life and death. And the hope, the hope of new life in God. And I have to admit that in these recent days that I have felt like the dried bones as I felt in the valley, filled with those dry bones in our passage from Ezekiel. And as I've read about the deaths that have taken place across not only this country, but across the globe and to the death of Lazarus in our gospel passage. Yes, we feel dried up, devoid of breath, aching from the loss of loved ones. Not only a physical death, but loved ones that we can't go and meet, that we can't be in close proximity to. The loss that tears at my heart sitting here in this sanctuary in this moment and not seeing the faces of this community of faith, you people whom I have come to know and love in the last three years. The loss of not being in physical contact with people. Most of you know I'm an extrovert. I'm a people person. I'm a hugger. I like to be with people. I like to be in groups. So right now I feel like I am in that valley filled with dry bones. There have been moments in recent days where I have felt like life was escaping from me. The blessing is, in this day and age of technology, I still can remain in contact with those whom I love, whether it's through FaceTime, emails, Facebook, Skype, telephone calls. It is a blessing that we have that availability. But yet in each of those cases, there's not that physical contact so we lose a part of ourselves. And it's easy to fall into that darkness, to, to fall into that deep, dark pit and lose hope. But know this, my friends, that in hearing the words from today's passages, which fit so appropriately for this time, for this place, for this moment in history, These words are filled with the hope of new life in God. And that death and loss do not, do not have the final word. For we worship. We worship a God who brings new life and new visions. We place our hope in a God who has power even over death as lifted up in our gospel passage where Lazarus has been dead for four days, but yet Jesus came and said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus walked out of the tomb, lifting up the hope and the promise that was given to all who gathered there. A living witness of his power over loss and death. His promise of new life. A powerful message for Mary, for Martha, for those gathered there, and for us today. So my friends, what it comes down to is this, what have we to fear? And I know about fear. We've all felt it, maybe not in recent days, but maybe in previous episodes of our lives, not knowing what the next moment might bring. Maybe being in that, that dark place where you see no light and feel lost. 
and thinking that there's no way out. Or sticking our head in a bottle, putting a needle in our arm, snorting some drug, thinking this is my release. My friends, God is stronger than that. For he truly has the last word. For as Paul lifted up in his letter to the people of Romans today, we know that setting the mind on the spirit is life and peace. My friends, as we continue in our journey through Lent this day, Lent is a time to choose life. Life in the midst of all the muck and the mire. Life in the midst of tragedy. Life in the darkness. Life in the death that surrounds us. Set your minds on the Spirit. Set your minds on Christ. Set your minds on God. For he has the last word. For Jesus said, I am the light and I am life. And through him, we have life eternal. Life eternal everlasting and in this day and age when we focus and set our mind on the spirit we will have strength to persevere strength and courage to see the day through and not just today but each and every day that God blesses us with until we take our last breath My friends, again, not only in this season of Lent, but as we live out our lives, it's a time to choose life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, let us join in prayer and a prayer confession and I ask that as I pray this prayer confession that you would silently pray your prayers of confession let us pray Lord of life we come to you consumed by our worry and our pain when we blame you for not being there in our need forgive us when we turn away from you in moments of loss Guide us back to your faithful arms. For we long to put our faith in your promised healing. We yearn to truly believe that you are the resurrection and the life. Teach us once more, merciful one, that you weep when we weep and rejoice as we find our way home. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God makes us a promise. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. The one who showed Ezekiel that a valley of dry bones could live again will bring us newness of life through Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. As we continue in our worship, we come now to that time where we usually take up a physical offering. But yet we are not gathered here physically as a community faith, but yet we need to continue to support the ministries of Clear Lake United Methodist Church. Even when we can't gather, we can't have activities, there are still bills to pay. There's still offerings to be lifted up for everything that we have comes from God. 
So I remind you to mail in your offerings, or you can contact Stacy at the office, and can she can guide you through the process of setting up electronic funds transfers. So let us give back to God, as God has blessed us. So give God your offerings. Would you please be in an attitude of prayer as I lift up our offering prayer? Holy God, you sent your Son into the world that we might set our minds on life and peace rather than dwelling on earthly things. Receive this offering that it may go forth to continue the work of Christ who brings fullness of life. May our gifts be a source of light in a world that has learned to love darkness. Amen. As we continue to live out our lives, not knowing what the next day may bring, there will continue to be struggles. But yet I have found in recent days one of my favorite hymns coming to me early in the morning, during the day, even in the middle of the night. It's from our hymnal, number 377. It is well with my soul. The words were written by Horatio Spofford back in 1873, and he wrote these words as he was traveling across the Atlantic, for he had sent his wife and children to go to Great Britain to be with some folks there, and on their trip, the boat that they were in was hit by another vessel and sank. His wife survived, but their child did not. And as he came to the spot where he, he truly felt that this tragedy had taken place, he penned these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, Though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. The <clears throat> My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day 
When my face shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Now go with the blessings of the one who forgives our failings. We go with God's blessings. Go with the blessings of the one who saves us and heals our hearts. We go with God's blessings. Go with God. Amen and amen.